Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to take an MDD file, which is a Motion Designer data file, out of ZBrush and get that back into Lightwave. Uh, the native files for MDD playback inside of Lightwave have a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to show you the tools that I use to get this done. I'm going to start off in ZBrush, and you notice I've got the demo hit loaded up. I've gone to the lowest subdivision level, and I'm just going to work with the low poly objects so it's easier for playback inside of Lightwave. I'll go ahead and delete the higher levels, and then we'll make a new layer for deformation. Now onto this, we're just going to do a little bit of quick sculpting, so I'll just go into the Move tool and then begin to just give this guy a little bit of a creepy smile. Just something that gives us some recognizable deformation. Alright, we'll call that good. We'll go ahead and click to turn off deformation recording. We can now drag the slider and we should see this as our animation. So we'll go ahead and set that back down to a level of zero. We'll go ahead and go to movie and we'll dock that over to the tray. We'll open up the timeline and choose show. The timeline requires uh, a minimum of two keyframes for your camera so I'm just gonna click to rotate a little bit that activates the camera track. We'll click once that adds a keyframe and we'll move it over and then we'll click somewhere towards the end and we'll give it another keyframe. The amount of time on the timeline is relative and is chosen in the movie menu under duration. So right now I'm just going to set that to something like five seconds. If we click now we can see this is roughly at four and three quarters seconds long. We'll go ahead and go back to our layer. We'll click on it. You can see the track updates now. This is our animation layer. We can also see a ghosted little bit on the timeline showing the keyframes for the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the slider all the way up to one and then click roughly where the camera was so that we have a matching deformation to the length of time on our timeline. We'll go ahead and drag that all the way down to zero. Then we'll go ahead and click towards the beginning and move that and again, if you click and hold, it's going to zoom in on the timeline, so I'll click one more time to zoom out. If we drag the time slider now, we should see the animation happening, which is exactly what we want. Inside the movie menu, I'm going to go ahead and go to the export name option. I'll click that. I'm going to send this to my desktop, and I'm going to send it to a folder for MDD playback, and I'm just going to leave this as ZBrush Baked Animation MDD. Now that that button is highlighted, it tells the program to save out the MDD file when we record the animation. I'll hold down the control key and the shift key and I'll click down here below the actual timeline. That's going to go into record mode. I'll click. It's now recording the animation and as it's doing that, it's saving the MDD file out to the hard drive. Okay. When we're finished, I'll go ahead and take my slider and set that back all the way to zero. This gives us our base object. I'll take this low res object and I will export it and I'll save it out. I'll just leave it as demo head 1.obj. That pretty much completes what we need to do inside of ZBrush. I'll go ahead and launch Lightwave. I'll import the obj file and then I'll go ahead and convert this to a sub D object by going to the Modeler Tools tab, Toggles, G Toggle Sub Patch. Now, traditionally speaking, there's two different ways to play back your MDD files. Um, both are found in the Object Properties. So, with Object Mode selected, we'll go to the Properties menu. We'll go into the Deform tab, and under Add Displacement, we'll choose the MD Plug file. This is the way we traditionally play back MDD files. And this does work, so even though you're going to find that it's a little bit broken with the ZBrush MDD files, for Lightwave recorded MDD files, this actually does work just fine. We'll double click. It'll give us the option to choose the MDD file. We'll load in the ZBrush baked animation, and then we'll click OK. When we drag this, you're going to notice that we don't get any real deformation at all. The other option for playing back MDDs is found under the dynamics. It's not necessarily that we're using dynamics, it's that we're using one of the dynamics for uh, MDD playback. So we'll go to Add Dynamic, we'll choose Cloth, we'll double click, we'll go to the File tab, because we're going to ignore all of the actual cloth deformation and, and dynamics options. We're just going to go to File, which is an alternate way of doing MDD playback. We'll choose 
load motion. We'll look for the MDD file. And it's going to tell us there's a node mismatch. That's largely due to the fact that we're dealing with a sub D object as opposed to the regular cage. You'll also notice that if we click and drag, we don't get any results. So if we take this out of sub D, let's go ahead and remove cloth effects and toggle that out of sub D. Let's go back to cloth. We'll add it under the file menu. We'll load the motion. We'll apply it. And you'll notice once we do this, the whole object just vanishes, which is bizarre. <laughs> so rather than have to deal with this, uh, because the native tools are, are behaving poorly, I'm going to show you the tools that I use um, for pretty much all my MDD work. Um, and these are tools developed by uh, Dennis Pontanier. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to a uh, web browser and we're going to type in DP node kit and do a search. The first link that comes up, additional nodes, click it. Then off to the left hand side, choose the download link. You're going to find downloads for 32-bit and 64-bit windows as well as Mac Universal Binary 32 and 64-bit and I believe the Mac CFM might be an older version of the Mac OS as well. Not really up on what the Mac uh, OS's are. Uh, the node kit that's in here provides a ton of additional nodes that do all kinds of crazy things and you want this kit. If you're a LightWave user, this thing is, um, is I, I consider this to be uh, just uh, essential to have. Once you uh, download and install this, inside of the deform tab for your object properties, we'll go ahead and I'm going to set my, I'm going to turn this back to a sub D object again. I'm going to set my subdivision order to last. Under the deform tab, I'm going to go in and choose enable nodes and I want to make sure that my node displacement order is set to before local displacement. I'll go into the edit nodes option and then in the node editor, again we're under the deform tab of our object, so we're looking at the node editor for displacements. We're going to go to add node and here you're going to see DP kit and this is where all of the DP kit additional nodes have gone to. There's some really good stuff in here including shaders um, for uh, adding uh, edge bevels, uh, shadows, metallic shaders. There's a lot of good stuff in here but we're mainly interested in what's happening here under displacement. And in here we have a lot of different options for MDD playback. I'm gonna, just going to go to the MDD pointer option. I'll click it and double click to get the node properties. In here I'll load the MDD file I have control over when it starts, how fast it plays back, and whether it repeats at the end behavior. We can also remap the time in here to make it play faster, slower, uh, over a series of keyframes. We're just going to leave everything at its default. Export, uh, choose the uh, vector output to the vector input, and close this down. As we drag this now, you'll see we now get the animation happening just exactly like we would expect. So, for whatever reason, the native tools are causing a problem. Not a problem at all for us. Download the DP node kit uh, and then install that. You'll find that the MDD pointer plugin uh, works just fine. So, hopefully, that helps you getting your MDD files out of ZBrush to play back inside of Lightwave.